What a week, yeah. Uh, wh how's the, how are you feeling? Are you riding high? Oh, I, uh, we're feeling positive. Um, and uh, we will continue to, to, um, to be the Māori party that everybody expects. Uh, we're challenging the status quo. Mm -hmm. uh, we call for or institutional um, racism to be uh, wiped out from uh, across all, all political spectrums and government agencies. But we will continue to push for tr uh, constitutional transformation, and that's our, that's our goal. That's the work. It's mm. been, um, we, you know, but so many people have so many questions about what happened this week with mm. Mecca. Why did she leave? Um, well, you heard her in her, her speech at Waipati Marae on her own Marae, and uh, she's given 20 years to the Labour Party uh, as a worker for Parikura Horomia and as an MP the last 10 years, mm. and uh, it was time for her to come home. So she spoke to the people that mattered, her whānau and her people, and um, has uh, followed her puku, and her wairua said it was time to come home. And so the Party of Māori will always be the waharoa for our people to come home. Mm. And, um, and that's uh, exactly what we did. So it was, it was personal for her. It wasn't like she was treated badly by the Labour Party. Well, she hasn't burnt anybody on her way out like uh, many other MPs do. Yeah. Uh, and so um, her thing was about her own feeling uh, good in herself. Party could always said there'll always be a Māori party and one, and one day our people will go home to it. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it is. Mm. Well, it, it, was, um, it happened in quite a dramatic way. I suppose these things are always dramatic <laughs> by their very nature. But why not speak to the Prime Minister? Even if not before, if you're leaving, maybe it's not strategically wise to do that. But what about after? What about that, you know, that respect and that relationship there? Yeah, well, it's only been four days and the Prime Minister's <laughs> currently in London. Well, I'm, so, sure, uh, I'm, sure the they, I'm sure that they can, they can uh, have a... Well, we know the Prime Minister will be very busy with the coronation today. But um, in regards to, uh, you know... Uh, uh, Mecca speaking to people. She spoke to her whānau and her, and her constituents, the her supporters, and uh, they said it was time. And so, um, I, I, you know, that's always a hard decision for anybody to make, yeah. especially in the political world, and I, I, I commend her for that, yeah. to follow her puku and follow her wairu, and she's come back to her whakapapa. What about the people of Ikaroa Rafati? How might they be feeling at the moment? Because they've just lost their Minister for Cyclone Recovery. It's a really important time for the um, region, and whānau are struggling. In the political world, uh, in terms of uh, being Māori in the opposition or in, uh, in the government, uh, especially the Party of Māori at this particular time, we haven't lost anything. Actually, we've gained uh, to ensure that Ikora Rafiti get the right resourcing going into uh, to the recovery. And so Mika will play a part, as both uh, Debbie and I, in regards to pushing the government to ensuring that it gives uh, equitable and equal funding to those organisations and to the organisations that matter, yeah. uh, and not back into government agencies that continue to hold on to uh, the funding through uh, the bureaucratic systems that they, they operate under. Mm. This is about giving out to those Māori communities who know their communities, who know what the issues are, and know how to deal with them. Yeah, but those communities have just lost a minister outside Cabinet advocating on their behalf at the top level of government. Well, they've lost about three ministers in that particular space, which tells us there's an issue there. Um, and so what we need is a strong opposition to ensure that the government pushes for more and equitable and equal resources heading into uh, uh, Te Tairawhiti, mm -hmm. I know there's a road being put into Ngāti Prau, uh, and that was actually driven by the locals. It was driven by local contractors. It was driven by local knowledge. And that's what we need is more resourcing into local knowledge and local solutions. So you're saying it won't really affect the people of Ekaroa Rafiti in the next five months if they don't have uh, Mecca at that top table? Well, in actual fact, you'll have Mecca in opposition pushing to ensure that, they, that uh, the government puts the right resourcing in there because mm. she would know firsthand whether it was right, whether it was wrong. And if it was right, I don't think I'd be leaving anywhere if it was getting the proper resourcing. That, that would be me. But in terms of heading forward, I think Mecca uh, is in a prime spot to ensure that Ikaro Rafti gets the funding it needs to be by putting pressure on this government to ensure they do that. From the outside. Absolutely. Is she a Te Pāti Māori? Is she a Te Pāti Māori MP now? There's been a little confusion. <laughs> right, as far as we're concerned, she's a Pāti Māori MP. Um, it felt like for the Māori Party um, that your election campaign launched this week with this big splash, a lot of heat, a lot of noise, a lot of political mm. theatre around it. But what is um, the strategy? What are you gunning for? Is it the Māori seats? Is it the wider electorate, um, the, the general seats? Or is it the party vote? We're going for all of it this time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so we've got uh, better at our political strategy. Uh, and so uh, there's definitely a two-tick campaign heading, heading your way. But also, uh, you know, the, the party's having conversations around standing people in key electorates, mm. uh, general electorates across the country, uh, and those who have high Māori population. Mm -hmm. um, as you've seen through the polls in the last uh, uh, Roy Morgan poll, mm -hmm. um, you've seen a uh, jump 
in, in the party vote uh, for Te Pāti Māori, and it's probably in a space we've never been before, 4.5% yeah. above the, uh, the threshold uh, in terms of where, where we are. Um, and so we, you know, we, we're related with uh, where, where the party is headed to, the trajectory of uh, support, uh, not just by Māori, but by, by Tangata Tiriti as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we, you know, that our, that our policies uh, for, for picking up um, those who are, uh, are struggling at this particular time uh, is resonating with people. I want to ask you, you know, because translating, you know, you've, there's, uh, there's some momentum around the party. There is heat and there's noise around the party. You've been very good at sort of drumming that up, you know, out in social media and those other networks. Um, but how do you translate that into gains in Parliament? Have you got the machine out there to get those people out to vote, for example? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, social media is the new door knocking for, for the party Māori. I think for everybody, that's where everybody is. Uh, nobody wants the, no, anybody knocking on their door anymore because they have access to, to MPs through, through television, through, through social media and things like that. Uh, in terms of policy gains, uh, I, um, I, don't, I don't disagree with that, with that because I think if you have a look at the policy management Festa of the Party Māori yeah. heading into the 2020 election, and you look at the Labour one, you'll find that many of the uh, the policy uh, gains this year have actually come from our manifesto. Mm -hmm. uh, hasn't come from the Māori man manifesto from the Labour Party, it's come from the Māori Party manifesto. And so Matariki, we introduced that bill back in 2009. Mm. Uh, if you have a look at um, uh, uh, the Māori wards, uh, that was actually, we, 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 we campaigned on that. We campaigned on the Māori Health Authority, Labour did not. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, we're quite happy, we don't care who puts our policy uh, who takes their policies over the line, long as they, they're over the line and now people are benefiting from it. Well, I want to talk to you um, about that because it's been, with this new, the, the, the most recent polling, lots of people have been saying you could be the kingmaker after the election. But National this week pretty much ruled out working with Te Pāti Māori. And it doesn't seem to me that you have a lot in common with uh, the National Party or ACT. Um, you look, we've always said that we won't work with any party that's not committed to creating a Tiriti Centre of Aotearoa. Uh, and so that's that's the position, um, and, and it's up to National and ACT uh, to look at how that may, they may, uh, may want to have those discussions and um, and create some kind of dialogue around that, uh, cancelling out the the most consistent party over the last 12 polls over the last year and a half, mm. uh, sitting in the kingmaker position. I don't think it's very uh, uh, politically savvy to make those comments uh, as we head into uh, October the 15th. Yeah, well, what they're probably trying to do is just put you with Labour and the Greens, right? So they're, they're trying to undermine this kingmaker role by saying that they won't work with you. Mm. I don't know whether that's the strategy or not, but uh, it's not working, obviously, uh, because the Roy Morgan poll just came out the other day. And so, um, you know, I just want to make it clear here that the party of Māori is not left or right. It's, it's, uh, we, we are uh, Māori and we are straight up the guts. Mm. And so if you look at a, uh, a whare tipuna, you'll see that one mahi on one side, one mahi on the other side, and they can be National Labour, but we are the kōruru on that marae, which is the teko teko, or the, the carved post in the middle. Yes. Uh, and we will sit there, because that's where the, the sacredness of that whare sits, that's where the tapu of that whare sits, and we'll continue to sit there, because we're Māori and we're straight up the guts. <laughs> I love that. So <laughs> what is the dream, Rawari? What is the dream position for you come October? Oh, um, the dream position for us is to ensure that we get the policy gains that our people deserve. And how are you going to do that? Oh, we will do that from, uh, from being uh, the kōruru on that whare. And so we will, we will have those discussions uh, come October, uh, but I can assure you that the Party Māori will be the kingmaker come October. Well, will, will that mean, you know, do you want to be inside the government or do you want to sit in on the cross benches and sort of vote, um, sort of hold the balance of power if you like? I think, I think the balance of power is a totally different space to be in. I think the balance of power is uh, not sitting on the cross benches or not sitting in government. And so this is what constitutional transformation looks like. Uh, this is where the Māori Party strategy is looking at. And like I said, we are the kōruru on that whare. We're not left, we're not right, we're Māori and we're straight up the guts. So it sounds like you do want to hold the balance of power in an ongoing capacity in the next parliament. Absolutely. Uh, it's not that we want to, it's just that we're there now. And so um, we're there now in the polls. Uh, we're there, there now in terms of uh, the trajectory of where the Māori Party is. And uh, we will continue uh, to do the work 
to do the mahi on the ground to ensure that we kaka maintain the confidence that we have in the people who are polling and supporting us at this particular time. So what does that look like in sort of a technical sense, I suppose? You know, it sounds a bit like chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Which I know the Māori Party seems to thrive yeah, in. Well, I, I wouldn't call it chaos. I'd call it development. Um, and so the Party Māori are looking at a different relationship in, in regards to the way we do politics. Uh, and, um, you know, it, it will come at a surprise because we don't want status quo. We don't want what's already happened because that hasn't for our people. Um, our people are struggling to put bread and butter on their tables. Uh, this, is the, um, this is the worst we've seen in terms of the, the, the cost of living uh, for our people uh, in, in decades. And so we need to look at something different because stupidity is doing the same thing over and over again expecting different results. Can you run a government like that though? Um, I think we can ensure that uh, the right thing is done for people who are struggling out there on the ground. And so uh, if we're going but to do things... what if nothing gets done, Robert? Well, everything will get done uh, because nothing has been done so far. Do you respect Parliament? Oh, um, I, I respect the ability to be able to make change in that space. Look, we've, we've got to work our, our way across all sectors, mm. uh, whether it's in Parliament, whether it's in Council, whether it's across government departments, whether it's even, even in our own organisations. And so um, I don't know what you mean by respect. Hmm. But I understand uh, the, uh, the job that I have uh, and the job that I've been entrusted to do, and that's to ensure we get policy wins for our people. Yeah, because, it, you know, it, it seems like um, you sort of rail against the system. That is a big part of your kaupapa. Mm. But how do you rail against the system and also operate inside it without letting people down? Well, this is challenging a system that's continued to let our people down. And so if we don't look at innovative ways to uh, create uh, change uh, in a place that has um, you know, created huge trauma, uh, intergener in intergenerational uh, 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 trauma and uh, uh, oppression of our people. Um, and, um, you know, if we, if we don't address those things, if we don't start looking at being creative in this particular space, uh, then, um, you know, we're going to continue to, 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 to do the harm and continue the intergenerational trauma that our people face. And so, um, you know, the Party Māori have, uh, you know, we're, we're in a space where we want to be able to implement a tangata whenua approach uh, yeah. to the oranga of our people. And that's exactly what uh, we're going to do when it comes to negotiating how this government's going to work. And so, you know, like, there's been these sort of different parts of the Māori Party in the past. Uh, I remember Hone Harawera mm. was on a similar kind of track when he left and he formed mana. But, you know, what he was able to sort of, his aspirations for his people outside Parliament, he was never able to translate them into real gains inside the political system. How will you do things differently? Oh, I think Hone's uh, made huge gains. I don't want to be here uh, um, uh, being the uh, campaign manager for Hone, but um, if you have a look at the um, uh, lunches in schools, mm -hmm. um, you know, the smoking, the, the banned smoking by 2025, you know, those are, those are all um, positive things that are still in, in, in the line of uh, uh, political priority right now. And so um, we've, we've already had huge gains in this particular space. Um, like I said, we campaign on the Māori Authority. Mm. We campaigned on Māori wards. We campaigned on Matariki holiday. We've campaigned on um, on uh, uh, taking GST off kai, you know, which is a, a which 70% of 79% uh, of New Zealanders support. And so these these are the things that uh, that uh, we, we you know we've got a, a, a petition for, to change the name from Aotearoa. Uh, Seventy thousand people supported that. You know, there's these huge gains that the Party Māori have made in our very short time. Back yes, in but these some of the games that you're talking about in your policy are huge structural changes as well. Your justice policy, for example, you want a separate justice system mm. for Māori. That's very different from lunches in schools and these other games that we're talking about. Oh, it's very different because it has to be different. When you're the most incarcerated people per capita in the world, 54% Māori male, 67% uh, for Māori female, we must look at a different system. Mm. We must look at um, um, healing uh, uh, and, um, and keeping our people safe. So one thing is keeping our people safe. Safe. The other one is about healing our people because of the intergenerational trauma that's been caused by successive governments and their, and their uh, reckless policies that have impacted Māori is the reason why we need to look at a system that is about uh, uh, transitioning the trauma that our people face back into their communities, back into their whānau. Is it realistic though, Rāwari? It has to be realistic. Otherwise, we're going to continue to harm our people and continue to incarcerate our people without the proper healing, without the proper um, uh, uh, processes put around uh, uh, our whānau who, who are uh, in prison. And we need to, when, when they come out, how do we transition them back into their whānau and their communities so that they are supported and that everybody is safe? You've Not only those who come out of prison, but their whānau as well. You've got $600 million uh, down for this new um, Māori justice system. Mm. 
Where's that money going to come from? That's about the budget of the justice system at the moment. Oh, well, that's, that's an easy answer. That's going to come from uh, taxing the wealth, uh, wealthy. And so, um, you know, we, we need to take GST off kite to allow our people to put bread and butter on their tables. But capital gains tax, it is absolutely absurd that, uh, that uh, New Zealand, the, the only, one of the only countries in the OECD that doesn't have capital gains tax. Then you have an empty house tax. There's 199,000 empty houses here in Aotearoa. Why are we not taxing empty house uh, 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 taxes on, on, uh, on those who own those houses, many on, owned by foreign ownership? Well, if I was living overseas and I had the money, I would buy a house here because there's no tax on it. And so that's where you're going to get your, that's where you're going to get your money from to be able to fund some of these, uh, uh, these, these particular projects. And uh, they're ambitious, but I think they're needed, and we need to have a a conversation, an adult conversation about how we achieve that. Well, I am looking forward to having many more conversations with you <laughs> in the run-up to the election. Um, congratulations on a big week. Thanks for joining us here on The Nation. Thank you. Kia ora.